Good morning, traders, and welcome to the live trading webinar today with J Trader, Stocks Trader. We do this every Wednesday as part of the Bookmap Education. Uh, we have an educational course. We have the live forward-looking analysis uh, uh, webinars, uh, not hindsight analysis, and then uh, we have these trading webinars. Uh, J Trader will be taking positions. It is in demo paper trading mode. Tomorrow we have Scott Pulsini trading futures. Uh, you guys know who J Trader is. Uh, I have his contact information. I'll be putting it into the chat. He does offer mentoring services. Uh, and we've got to go through the disclosures. Uh, and then we're going to jump right into the market. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes before J Trader uh, uh, jumps in and uh, starts uh, presenting. And I've got some good things to go over here uh, from yesterday. All right, general disclosure. All bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so uh, you guys can see my screen and hear me. Uh, correctly um, and uh, good morning good morning Fabio uh, and others um, all right so let's take a look here we're gonna take a look at good morning David uh, a bigger bigger picture uh, you know here's here's book map uh, I actually have quite a bit of data in also from yesterday I left it open I missed something yesterday really pretty fascinating here I wanted to cover uh, and that's what we're going to go through. Uh, we saw this pretty strong trending move and we were looking for the trend to continue. So let's look at the bigger picture. Uh, here's our hourly chart. We were looking for the webinar was somewhere around in here, uh, I believe. Uh, here's 12 o'clock, right? So here's 11 and 10. So it's we were down at these lows in here. Um, and, uh, and then we saw the break and we saw that the strong volume come in. Um, unfortunately, I was demoing like, uh, I don't know, the trading dome at that point. Um, and then we come back and take a look at it. It's like, wow, this is pretty strong. We're looking for this to continue. Uh, end of the day, we're looking for it to come back up into this kind of uh, 45, 20 area. And uh, why? Because this is the, the trading structure in here. Same things that we look for on our uh, in book map in the order flow. Trading uh, uh, within ranges and breakouts, etc. So, uh, we drew up this zone uh, and uh, we traded up into this zone. Uh, and then um, we see today's action and uh, you can see the 15 minute chart over here and uh, our daily is over on the left hand side. But uh, yeah, we, we gap up here, pretty big gap uh, and uh, looking for the trend to continue uh, and maybe trade back up into the daily up and up into this kind of uh, uh, 4580 uh, area or so. We drew up this line here uh, yesterday as well, around 45.80, saying if we can get through that, the next swing is up here. Okay, and we should see a really nice stop run up in that area too. A lot of stops will be kind of hiding behind th these uh, these areas here, uh, I imagine. So uh, if we get enough strength in buying, um, that's where we're going to find um, uh, you know even more buyers uh, up in here. All right. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Um, all right, so anyway, uh, just a few different scenarios to consider here, right? We still have a big gap here to fill. Uh, maybe we'll get some sellers in down at this level here around uh, 45, uh, 54, uh, and get a drop back down into here. All right, so anyway, just uh, some considerations. Uh, 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 good morning, Chris Testing. <laughs> um, so uh, the... Um, Anyway, uh, just wanted to show the higher time frame first, all right? And uh, levels that uh, we're looking at and levels of interest. And uh, now we can jump into book map uh, and uh, you can see the uh, the day here. Uh, this is the entire overnight session here. Uh, and then uh, here's the cash open uh, and we're moving higher here so far. So uh, looking forward to continue until we see something different, right? Uh, they're chewing away. They've got a lot to go through. Now we can also look at the liquidity in this area here. 
uh, and uh, you know it's the high liquidity is up here uh, around this 45 um, 80 area that's our 80 area up here all right and that was that swing we were just looking at right so that that is matched up pretty nicely here so uh, we see a lot of people front running it though okay they're they're in front of that area and wanting to get filled in front of it so we might not get up there today we got to see if there's more buying pressure so far so good so we, we're looking forward to continue until we see something different and the trends start to change this is what i wanted to cover yesterday uh, or I, I saw yesterday afternoon and I was I was upset I didn't cover it. Some really great iceberg buying in here. I knew this would happen um, if I have too much data in here. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll be able to look at it. Um, the um, Just a minute here. Ah, right. Um, we need the second stream in here. Yeah, should be fine for now, uh, but we're getting we're getting there. Let me uh, let me reach out here. Hold on a minute. Okay, all right. So this is what I wanted to cover in here. Uh, this was the breakout yesterday, okay, from our our trading range. Uh, and these these icebergs in here, some pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, and uh, see how the icebergs are trending with the stops here. And yeah, this is what I want to show because, I, you know, um, you might see this and you might think that this might be incorrect. It might be a bug in the, in the programming. It is not. It is spot on. Um, really fascinating stuff here. Okay. And let's show the stops as well. Um all right, this blue line, and you know what? I'm going to reduce the heat map here uh, for now. Okay. Oh, reducing the heat map. Hold on. Stops and icebergs and stops. There we go. Okay, so this was a big iceberg in here. Okay, this blue line. Uh, and... Um, I've been in here for, for a while. It got pretty aggressive in here as well. Uh, this is what I want to show. It, it was it, we can we can look at we can look at this example here. This might even be better. So it started here actually, um, stayed in the book. Okay, they're on you know it's like a limit order, but it's hidden from the order book, uh, and they're here. They're starting to get filled a little bit in here, as you can see, uh, and then. Um, Okay, it's disappearing because of a setting. Hold on, sorry. All right, there we go. Okay, um, so what happened in here is, is really interesting. Uh, so we have this iceberg laying, sitting on the bid here, uh, getting filled. Um, you know, sellers hitting into it and they're getting filled. Here they got aggressive. Uh, and here, uh, you know, when you, you can place a limit buy order on the best offer uh, and uh, it will sit there on the best offer. When you do that, if you let's say it's just one contract, well, you're probably going to get filled immediately. Most likely depends on the market. Uh, but let's say let's say with the S&P, you put in a thousand there. You can try it in demo uh, and, and watch and see what happens. Um, but uh, your your order starts to act like an aggressor at that point. Now it is a limit order, but it starts to act like a regressor because it's sitting there in any any transaction that takes place, like any selling, it's, it's it takes that liquidity, and that's what's happening here. Uh, so uh, it, you know, basically they're getting filled here on the best offer, and they sweep the order book. Now they go to the next level. They sweep that and go to the next level and sweep that as well. So. You know, uh, if you see this kind of behavior in here, it doesn't happen very often, but you can see that uh, the iceberg is going up and stops are going up at the same time. Okay, now not it's not a whole lot of stops. Uh, you know, the the axes here aren't the same. Um, you know, so we're looking at um, you know 100 and I don't know 60 or uh, uh, 70 or something like that here in terms of iceberg transactions, uh, and we see the move to the upside. Uh, and we see the stop run is only 18. And it's this, uh, you know, just because we're zoomed in, we see the big spike here. Okay, so what happened here? Uh, well, this uh, this iceberg got very aggressive and it kind of um, 
it kind of chased or whatever it is they they threw it here on the best offer they're getting filled they they sweep the order book higher they're still getting filled they sweep it higher they're still getting filled and then what happens is now this is one event here and i know that's one event because um uh what has um uh, happened here uh, the t's and the e's i'll go over that in just a minute uh jeff yeah um the um the t's or i'm sorry i know this is one event because after this book sweep then best bid and offer update afterwards all right so uh so we know this is one event uh and <coughs> we also know that there's a stop run in here and it, it's it happened up here okay 18 only 18 contracts uh, we don't know where those stops were though they could have been at this price level or this one or this one okay they could have even been you know potentially in here as well likely in these three levels here most likely and what's happening is is this iceberg here ran the stops they're triggering stops in here and then the, then finally uh, the stops are are uh, displaying up here they're getting stuffed they're getting basically slipped okay one two or three or four levels in here they're getting slipped uh, and that's the event, a very interesting event that took place here. I just want to get across this point that uh, almost, you know, most of the time, like 90 something percent of the time, the icebergs are acting as a, uh, a passive order. Here, you can see it working as an aggressor. Okay, it still kind of behaves like a, a limit order, uh, but a limit order can be an aggressor if the size is really big and what happened with this iceberg after this event took place uh, is at at this price level of 44.8150 it just stays in the book and now now that you see the best offer one tick above but they they don't they're not chasing anymore they're not trying to sweep the order book any higher after that and they're getting filled here now on here they're getting filled on on the uh on the on the best offer here they're getting filled on the bid they just stopped uh, and they're staying in the order book here okay so really interesting event here uh, take a look for this and this is why I want to cover it in the bigger picture here okay our order flow event now stops and icebergs are a confluence uh, the bigger event here is just you know buyers and sellers in the market okay we just recognized here the order type and the larger player that uses that order type in this area here Okay, and let's move to the upside, right? So now we have a, a pretty nice confluence, though. We know that uh, the icebergs are buying. Okay? Now, are they covering? We don't know that, but uh, we certainly know they're being aggressive and they're moving the market higher. Okay, that's fact. Uh, and uh, we also know that uh, stops are being triggered on the upside here as well. We also know that the market is starting to move away from this whole value area down here. Okay, on size, okay, on on high volume, right? So that it's a it's an added confluence uh, that should uh, help you with your trading to understand uh, uh, this and and put more context into this move and rally to the upside. All right, so that's what I wanted to cover. Uh, and um, uh, thank you, J Trader. I see you just came in uh, a minute or two ago. Uh, let's turn it over to Joseph and let him uh, take it away uh hold on just a minute good morning good morning joseph how are you good morning bruce can you hear me yes loud and clear good morning everybody glad to be here so let's start traders i'm gonna share the screen yeah hold on a minute here yeah go ahead Okay, you should be able to see my screen, traders. Yes. Perfect. So I was looking, uh, Bruce, at the sweep indicator. I was looking, uh, I was listening to what you were saying. Uh, very interesting. Um, so first of all, this morning I posted a few charts in, um, in the trading room. And the market was very uh, volatile. I really like this market. Uh, we had 
a lot of uh, uh, good moves um, Python these days. So I will really start with Python this morning. And uh, Python is uh, one of those stocks that lost more than 80% of its value in the last one year. Uh, we can see over here that the daily chart, we were basically 171, then back over here to the 20s, and now bounce to the, four, bounce to the 40s. So this morning, I also was in streaming. I was explaining also over here what I could. You know, I have my, uh, my morning plan, and I had a plan for both sides. So if we are going to have a long or if we were going to have a short, I'm going to use over here a one minute chart just to show you the, the levels. So you can see right away the main heat map levels that come up on the chart. And, uh, and you can see the, the main level over here, 38, which was this uh, high volume area of resistance exactly over here. So the morning opened, we started to short just at the gate on this pop at 9.30 that you can see over here. Pop into high liquidity area, 37 and 10. Uh, where basically we have also over here the J lines decided to short and share already my charts in, uh, in the room. And then it went all the way down over here. So it took a decent profit down here. And then we had a second pop into the 37. You can see over here up to the second J lines over here, 37, 35. And you can see this push right over here. You can see push 37, 35. They started to put a little bit of liquidity on top and then over here the sellers so we have a first part that you can see only blue dots and then magenta so we have buyers and sellers shifting and then another unwind and then we had basically traded this reversal and you can see what they did so bruce will agree with me that we had first of all a main support around 3470 but then we have this structure you can see over here that we had buyers they were trying to hold and and basically hold each dip, right? So before we had buyers at 35.50. So we're talking about this level down here. And then we had buyers over here at 35.70, which is this level over here. And then these buyers started to move more up. So here, 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 here. And you can see that we're doing this, 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 this so they're trying to hold uh, the price and looking to push it all right so we can see in that moment that we have dip buyers i mean somebody over there is pretty strong wants to hold the price wants to push it or more than one players and then it went eventually went over here to this 38 dollars uh, sorry to the 37 dollars 37 dollars they break it out over here they find support and then they continue to push it up until the 38 which is this level over here and where we have the pullback because we have the high liquidity so look at this chart all right we had a main dip over here to the 3550 and then a reversal now it's basically curling you can see over here it's forming right now so if we have this confirmation to this morning of 38 breakout, this could lead to a big massive push, right? So I'm looking over here for a possible uh, long pattern. Okay, I'm entering over here long on this dip because I want to see a break of this 38. And I want to see a push to the 38.50 and even 39 over here. So high volume area over here. Gonna risk the 37 and 50. In the meantime, we also have DCFC that is pushing strong today. So a little bit of sellers at this point. I'm looking over here at the price uh, times and sales. A little bit of sellers at 80. They went, they're eating the 80. I'm gonna filter over here the minimum size to at least 1,000 shares, only to see the big blocks passing.
there we are 86 90 so let's see if we can have the break over here of 38 that's the level that i'm looking at so Python this morning i had like four i think four trades only one was a small stop the other ones were uh pretty good ones uh crazy morning Thirty-eight is trying to hold. <clears throat> now thirty-seven and eighty. So right away they stuffed it. So I'm using right now the eighty over here as a guide. So below eighty, I'm out for a break even. Thirty-eight is the first resistance. There we are out. Got it over here. Break even. So basically, scratch trade. And I was looking for a bigger move, but. That's price action. So try to long over here. So the top out entirely. Now, what can we see over here? It is still above the daily, still above the open. Uh, they have over here a high liquidity, high volume. I see still a, a possible bullish trend. So I'm not really looking for a short. Day lines are pushing strong over here. I'm looking more for a long. Python over here again. Uh, crazy morning on this. Basically, trade a short, long, everything. And this is the uh, DCFC. So DF DCFC, I shared my trade before in uh, the the trading room. I longed over here, then I longed over here before the open, and I sold over here. Took like four longs over here, added size, and I sold into this pop, and then I didn't trade anymore. I took a uh, uh, stop break even over here was trying to buy the dips and uh, my plan this morning was to look for a long on this or 13 stuff we are not stuffing at the gate we had the big support and then i'm only looking to trade this long if you know what is dcfc you don't have it on the illusion tracker so i suggest you to go for example on etsu trade uh, this is the is the r app over here it's a 1.4 billion company. They have a very good over here um, description. You can see they doing the supplies, the red car and charger for electric vehicles, all right? In the United States, Europe, Australia, internationally. And you can see that they had news. Uh, three different reports, location of new US manufacturing facility in Tennessee. And uh, this could be probably a very good former runner today because it's already at uh, uh, 1650. So let's check together over here. 1650. And this morning we were at 12. In pre market traders, we were down here at 10. So it's already up 70%. Not bad, right? Not bad over here from the, the early, early morning. Now, can I trade short something like this? Not really. It should really go parabolic, but I'm not trading short something like this. And I'm only trading these on patterns, like on uh, DCFC over here. You can see this uh, consolidation to the J lines. So if you're looking for a pattern too long over here, the only way I'm long in this is here, here, or in this case, if you're fast enough, because I was looking at this was super fast and I couldn't really grab, I was open over here the zoom with, uh, with Bruce, was super fast and started to push all the way up. Um, you can see the sweep indicator. So over here, Bruce, maybe after we'll, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We have over here aggressive sellers, right? Bruce, is this what it shows basically? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I read the, the, the manual on the sweep, but basically it's pretty, it's pretty simple to understand it. 
I just will change the color because I get confused with the green zone over here. For me, green is always, you know. Yeah, we, the, the, it's been changed. Um, if you, you know, uh, update the, or, you know, re-download it okay. or whatever. But it, but you can also just switch the colors yourself. Um, yeah, so. yeah. Just because, you know, facilitate. I like, you know, just to have like or blue or, or magenta over here. Right, right. Uh, let's look, traders, this uh, this formation. I'm going to close for one second on times in sales because I just want to focus on the structure. There we are. So look, we are in the main support over here, 1550. Half dollar number, main magnet over here, main liquidity area. Below we go to the 15. Below we have 1480. So this is basically what I think. If I would be a market maker, I would trigger over here a fake breakdown of 1550 and then reclaim it all the way up, trapping shorts. I will see what the what they're going to do. I'm not really definitely looking to short over here. The only way I would trade this would be a long on a fake breakdown and then right away reclaim. Well, let's spot that 15. This is basically the over here 56 selling at 75 so we saw the fake breakdown right is this what i wanted now i'm looking for 60 anyway you have to be super quick you can see the fake breakdown came right away push back up there we are 85 they're trying to find momentum selling at 80 all right there we are 16 selling more 1605 so in and out in and out in and out very fast you can make like a couple of uh, four figures over here in few seconds if you trade the exact time like in and out in and out in and out right so that's all you have to do traders so now we are holding one third of the position let's push it oh 16 10. Until hold the 16, I want to keep this. We're probably going to have a 1650 before it may be stuff. So what I did over here was to look for a fake breakdown. So we had the sweep over here right away reclaimed. And then right away you start seeing over here the buyers, right? Buyers coming in, buyers coming in. Uh, fake breakdown over here. Easy setup. Take the long. You make your fast 2Ks and you're done. pizza money exactly this is i think is the best trader of the day this is from my mentor lily she longed over here and she took three bucks per share not bad trade not bad trade so 1660 i like these buyers bruce because we are at 10 30 and we had this reclaim break of 1030 and still massive volume, half a million per bar on the one minute chart. So this is still very good, uh, I would say, powerful volume. And we can have the 1650. Why I'm looking 1650? Because it was the previous high over here. Also, we have the main heat map right at 1650. And I need also to know if things go bad, what I'm going to trail. Because if we break 16, we can probably wash big 30, 40 cents. So I'm going to risk between 1585-1590. Uh, seems a small pennant over here formation. Uh, let's see. Seems like this, right? Pennant formation. So possible this, 1550 stuff, and then boom down. So it's very hard, traders, to... Uh, To take these longs if you're not super fast. Fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, thirty-six, thirty-seven, forty. Let let it go to forty-five. A little bit, little bit, little bit. Out. Forty-nine. Got it. And now possibly stop and unwind. I'm not out everything. I'm holding a small partial. There we are, 60 breakout, maybe it's coming. 
This was the previous side trader. So look over here, the book map. Boom. Home run trade. Home run trade. Home run trade. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Right? Beautiful. Five figures for the day as well. Nice one, Joseph. Thank you, buddy. Now I'm looking at what support traders, the previous low, 16 and 18 over here. So I'm probably going to get out everything below 16, 18. Main support 1628. Let's see if it holds. Now they're selling it. Careful. Possible wash over here. We have profit takers. I'm out everything over here before the 20s. And now I'm basically waiting a few minutes. Basically waiting a few minutes. I need to recollect a little bit. So I'm not saying this is going to go down, but it's having, first of all, a volume divergence means that we have three higher highs, three lower highs in volume, possible break of this level and wash formation. Over here, uh, let's see if we're gonna have a sweep to the downside, a clear out over here of the 16 and wash until uh, 1650, which was the previous support. So you know already what I'm going to do because I explained you before it's going to possibly happen. Then I don't know if it will happen, but basically I'm teaching you how to process everything, how to figure out what it's going probably to do, how I can do this only from, I would say, years and years of uh, screen time and just looking at the markets. Right now I'm simultaneously trading this and I'm simultaneously trading Bitcoin with my beer over here. So uh, a little bit of work. 16 over here. Let's see, you can see the support traders. They're attacking that support. Let's see. I want to see sellers just over here, the 16. Uh, they're looking to sell it. They're looking to sell it. Possible wash coming. Seems very tight. Very tight. Boom, wash. First support went. And now they're holding it. They were attacking the support. They sold over here. Then right away, somebody or covered over here or bought. But basically, we can see that they dipped uh, and then bounced back up 16. So they made the same formation we had before, which is a fake breakdown and right away reclaim it like we had over here. Am I going to buy this? No, absolutely not. We don't have that huge heat map like we had it before. I can be a little bit more scared. We didn't have the fast wash right away up. So take it easy. Don't attack every single thing out there. Sixteen, sixteen zero five. Starts to curl over here, but I see less uh, less buying versus what we had over here, which was a very fast buying pressure, and it came up every 10 cents in 10 cents. Over here, they're trying to do it, but no. They don't have big strength over here. Making a new higher low, a new higher high. Uh, 
Uh, careful traders, because we can have another long push in over here for a scalp. So I'm gonna attack 1620 breakout. It's a very small size this time. So if we curl over here and I see massive buying, I'm gonna tra trade small at 1620. And don't follow over here what I trade. This is only my personal trading, okay? I'm up good for the day, so I'm downsizing right now. I'm not giving back, you know, my entire profits. I'm not in yet. I'm looking to see if I can have a main support. The 16, just 7,000 over here is not enough for me to take a long. No, no buying pressure over here. So waiting. Start to see some green, but then also some big seller at 16.15 and 16.20. Right now it's in a range. Anybody traded today DCFC long? I really don't suggest you to trade it short. I didn't trade this short at all. Only longs. Or to the 1570 support over here. Jumping long, very small at the 74. I took a very small position, risking 70. Just looking for a small bounce. Selling 85 partial. So I wash into the main over here, big uh, sweep. Wash into the main support 1570. Took some long selling at 90, didn't get filled, have to cancel. Ninety some support. Waiting now. Break even stop maximum. Wanna see 16 plus. So why? Because I start seeing over here buyers. I like this. 1601 on the ask. You can see bars coming smaller than before, but we're still holding the support. So I'm giving it time to work. I know that if I cut it now, my position has no sense. Simultaneously, I calculate my risk reward ratio, 16 right now. Now I'm up 30 cents with two thirds of my position in. 16.03, I'm using 16 as a tar, as a trail. 16.14, I wanna take it. Didn't get filled, right away stuffed. This is how you have to think when you're trading. 16 trying again to, res to resell on the ask so trying to add liquidity because i'm scaling out in partials and now holding the rest the last one third Careful over here, 79. And they're spread right now, you see? What it means spread? Less liquidity. Whenever you see something that has more spread, it means less liquidity. So they will never tell you this, but it's in fact, it practically is very, you know, logical. 1582. I see a little bit of ask 1595, so they can top it over here. 
at this point, what I'm looking at is this 1695. And I can see over here a little bit of liquidity. You can see, right, get out, possible unwind right now, possible wash. Ah, uh, there we are, wash, boom. Okay, you have to get out just before, you know, you have those one, two seconds. If you don't know this pattern over here, if you don't know this pattern, if you don't know how to read the price action over here, if you don't know how to read order flow, by the time that you will hear my voice, that's the reason why you cannot follow alerts, you will never make money. Make sense? So you have to learn a pattern, you have to study. <clears throat> um, don't think traders that we make money every single day personally the system works since the starting of the year at the open with 88 percent win rate but for example last week i closed the week break even because i did one day good one day bad one day good one day bad one day good this week I'm almost to the six figures. So it's very different and how you feel if you can uh, take all the setups, all the signals. For example, last week I had missed so many signals. I was tired, I was distracted. I had too many things to follow, too many traders to coach. And I basically had a lack in my performance. So when you feel like this, put aside your ego uh, and uh, think more, you know, doing not everything. Don't try to embrace the world. But try to do few things, but better. Possible long coming up again at 1590s. I don't see any more that being liquidity at 1595, small at uh, 16. I need to see though a support over here around 1580, which I don't see yet. And what I'm doing right right now is not my typical trading. Okay, my typical trading is buying, like I showed it before over here. This is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Lily buying over here selling up here that's my typical trading but today we have a stock that is simply uh, being so good with us all these dips to buy the washes so i'm trying to trade right now using a tight risk management and looking for those a plus setups uh this is another type of long for example the same exact price action that we're analyzing right now and uh, again this over here so you can see that it's always basically the j lines or the curl that we have and then extensions all right so very good work over here Just try to learn what i'm telling you try to learn and you know make uh, if you have questions i will answer every single question that you have all right selling pressure came 1550 previous support main heat map over here 1550 if you break say goodbye we're gonna see probably 15. now can i shorten the weakness no don't do it they will kill you who are they market makers algos whales institutions uh big investors big hands bruce <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, your trading floor over there in San Marino is uh, making these mar market gyrations. No, they're, they're eating only spaghetti and pizza over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you're drinking coffee night and day <laughs> and trading. Uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, lately, the, the monster. I like more the, that lately. <laughs> so, traders, DCFC, if you have to think of something right now, what it looks like uh looking at as a chart pattern seems more like you know three wave pattern or head and shoulders right so with a possible break pop and uh unwind to this level of here why this level of blue well simple because it basically works so good and because i'm telling you now the next thing that i want to do is if i don't have that setup can I have another setup to trade over here? All right. So we have the support 1550, long consolidation, start to see a break of this, consolidating small above, and then I'm going to take a long over here, risking this level. 
so you know exactly what I'm looking. I'm looking out for a breakdown and looking too short over here, very small. Uh, the bars, you have to take them very early. Now they're super expensive. I was looking with three brokers. They were going from 0 0.09 to 0 0.4. Now I didn't, I didn't check what they were. Of course, a trading long doesn't give any bars to buy, uh, um, bars to reserve. It's like better, uh, you have no stress. But 90 per, actually 80% of the small caps you will trade in your life, day one, day two, they will unwind. Okay. There we have second push. Uh, this is a stuff. So you always ask me, I receive a lot of uh, questions. What is a stuff? Is basically this. It's basically a clear out, so a breakout uh, resistance with right away a wash. In this case, what happens? Longs are exhausted and we have more selling pressure, so more supply versus demand. What is the uh, result? On a fast wash means a fast sell off. All right, still trying to bounce over here. Yeah. Um, right now, this is a, is a suggestion that I gave you. Um, when it's after 10 o'clock, I'm not screen sharing because I don't have place over here to screen share this as well. But after 10 o'clock, I always have next to me a 5 minutes and a 50 minute chart. Why? You can spot better the price section and you can see better the patterns. You see over here, for example, the, the pendant over here that was basically very clear to understand. Or a 5 minute chart. You can see right away at a glance, you had the Zealand's work as support. Now seems a distribution pattern. In this case, Looking at this, seems really like something like a small wedge or pennant. So look also the bigger time frame, that's a point. Yeah. So resistance 16 and uh, 16 and 1610 on DCFC. Why well, I'm looking at that? Because we're holding the support. And we have this uh, previous high, which is this level of here resistance. And also we have the 16, which is this level over here. So if I'm looking at the last two bars over here, seems an ascending triangle, break out over here, good volume. Look how they, they, they broke the volume over here. Look how they're buying. I'm longing over here, no. I missed the train, I'm not gonna trade it. But this was another good push. You see the huge volume came, so aggressive buyers over here, momentum. There we are, another breakout. That's the reason why don't short something like this. It's gonna go crazy. 17.50, wow, what a move. You see over here, traders, reason why you have to use the five minutes or the 15 minutes hard. We're just saying about the 1610. 
another you can see push soak into this 1750 right away wash so i believe some take profits over here don't look to short something like this too strong too high volume will kill you uh i always thought you know you take the top tick you're so cool it's so great in reality you take a top tick one times out of five maybe and then other times you're basically always or too late or too early and you get stabbed So how do you, how do you avoid that, Joseph? Knowing uh, uh, it's basically if you know that um, if you've been burned at the pot when you were small, all the next times you won't get near that, right? Yeah. So basically, if you learn through experience by losses that something is not going to work for you. You're not going to do it. And I'm not saying don't trade extension because I like to trade extension. Bruce knows it. But don't trade an extension when the volume is so high. Don't trade an extension when you have a recent IPO. Don't trade extension when you have a massive breakout around 10, 10 30, because that is where I would say big hands, wheels, institutional buy. Or at the open, or 10 30, or end of day. They're trying to hold over here 1650. I see some bars coming. 1650, possible another push to the upside right now to start to look over here. Dip at 50. I grab small on the bid. I grab very small on the bid, long. Risking the 55s. Selling 78. Possible push to 17 again. There we are. More volume. Again, seller at 80. Almost up out in the money. So I need to see a curl up. There we are. There we are. There we are. 87. They're trying again. Careful if loses 80, will wash. So there we are. 95. Selling 95 and didn't hit out all. Boom. Done. So in and out, in and out, in and out. The more you can do this, the more you can be profitable, the more you can spot those dips, the better it is. Now, 15, 16.50, we have the main heat map over here. So what I'm looking over here is or starts curling again or washes to the 16th. So I'm probably done for the day uh, with uh, trading. But when you have days like this, DCFC, uh, try to grab the best A plus setups near the J lines. We're too long. So accumulations pattern over here for the long that's all you have to do okay this is over here that's all you have to do right we can do like this i'm gonna remove this and i'm gonna make a screenshot so you can understand what you have to look for okay what are the setups over here so let's put a little bit of zoom <laughs> I'm going to put it like this. Where did when study configurations? Uh, up here. I think it's important for everybody to understand this. So this is with only 2000, so it's too much. Let's filter to 999. Okay. And we can put 
this level over here, which is that level over here, right? And then we can put our arrow over here. So this is the long pattern. And uh, the long pattern is over here. And the setup is I have, I think, around 140, 150 example of this setup. This is a day line scroll up long uh, with recent IPO, high volume. Um, and this is a billion dollar company, right? This is a billion dollar company. And also over here you have the 10, 15, 10, 30 setup because that's really the time for a breakout. And over here we have uh, a big aggressive buyers stepping in, removing liquidity, confirmation of the powerful move. And I really like to see these uh, now. Uh, this doesn't happen every single day, but for example, in the last few days, we had this on uh, NVCT and PHUN, PHUN, right? Not today, right? Not today. Uh, by memory, NVCT, we had it two days ago, and PHUN maybe yesterday or the day before. I'm going to post this in the book map uh, stocks room. So how to trade long on stocks with high volume. In this case, we put DCFC. So we have a reference, right? We have a reference over here. So let's look at this 650, uh, 1650, pardon, 1650. So this is DCFC. Now again, look over here. So they're not really breaking the 1650. We can remove this. They're still holding the support. Again, we see over here a possible pendant, lower highs, higher lows. They will decide again the price to the direction. We hear direction based on chart pattern in this case we have pennants because if you look over here at this and then this seems another one <laughs> so basically they're doing the same pattern over and over and over so 1650 we have no more that main support In fifty again. They're trying to form over here some kind of support. So you can see they're trying to stack over here the bid again. I'm not gonna trade anymore this time for real. I think they're gonna push up again but getting tired so before doing stupid errors and giving back all the profits of the day i'm setting the sidelines closing my brokers
And I'm going to follow in the price section with you guys. It's getting very tight over here. So move is going to be above this level or below this level. Definitely. Look for those two levels over there, traders. They're testing the support 1640. You can see we have small liquidity and then higher liquidity. They remove over here all the liquidity 1630. You see, they're still trying to bounce it. They're still trying to over here find support for longs. Sixteen thirty five. Big seller jumped in. It flashed over here for a few seconds. I really like uh, spoofing over here because it was not executed and then dumped to the 1615. That's the, the spoof that we had over here. So I don't know if then the same spoof canceled for to get over here executed and short on the bid or sell on the bid. But for now, we have a breakdown of the uh, pennant below the 1637. Watch over here. Like that sweep over here. I put automatic, Bruce. Um, I like over here below that support 1615. Right away, it washed to 16 support. And then it washed again to the next support level 1580. Yeah, I think this will um, uh, coincide really well with your um, washes uh, and, uh, and sweeps, uh, you know. So um and confirm it i mean you, you already know it is i mean it's even clearer in stocks that it's a it's a book sweep uh yeah but, uh, look over here look this yeah you see buddy perfect over here right away wash boom rock pull wash uh uh in this case we had a soak right away slam down however you want to call it traders but basically, yeah, I like this uh, this sweep. This morning I was talking with one of our traders, uh, AIM, and he told me 
I'll put over here, you will really like it. Remember last week, Bruce, also we, we spoke about it. So today I started to test it. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty conservative. So before testing something, <laughs> yeah. I want to just like uh, see also other people's opinions. But it seems working very good, even this wash over here. Very nice over here. I mean, this is a 80 cents move, right? So this is not really uh, a small wash, this wash over here. So I really like it. Really, really like it. Yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, a, a treacherous market. I mean, you can see because like in a very short time frame, a lot is trading really quickly and moving price really quickly. So, um, you know, people are, uh, uh, you know, exiting very, you know, hitting stops or like larger players just dumping. Um, but, uh, uh, for example, today we had the same over here in Pitten. And uh, I'm going to do like this. And you can see on Pitten how many times that happened. On all this unwind, boom, wash, boom, wash. It's breakdown, washes, washes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, if it coincides with some of the levels you're looking at and some of the moving averages you're looking at there, um, you know, should add a nice confluence. Look over here, this push, when they start really to buy aggressively over here, this is amazing. Or this over here, Bruce, it pushed right away boom yeah yeah beauty uh, I'll, show you, I'll, I'll show you some of the uh, settings uh in there uh, joseph i mean you can put it on automatic setting as well i put it for now automatic okay yeah that's good. uh let, let me get it one second maybe you give me another few tips over here one second bruce so yes I need it's to that put one yeah here and then it goes in my other monitor, so sweep indicator. Yeah, I put over here automatic mode. For now, seems working good on the stock that I saw this morning. Mm -hmm. But would you change anything over here? I mean, change it to when it to, to make it match up. You know, um, uh, yeah. each day is going to be a little different. But uh, uh, if you if you go back to the um, uh, uh, if you go up a little bit more, right? And you so you're gonna you have thirty. It, so you've got a standard deviation interval every 30 minutes uh, and then the multiplier you have it at 10. So it's working pretty well for you. If you want to make it um, filter out more, just slide it to the right a little bit more. Okay. okay. And, and what is, and see the number in gray above, um, uh, up a little higher. Yeah, right there. Yes. That's how many uh, shares have to trade within one minute and at least over at least two price levels for it to populate okay got it got it got it got it got it all right so for example maybe if i i can filter something only for tesla only for apple and and fix it you know for those stocks in a different way correct because basically those are the stocks that i trade every single day uh tesla apple uh, right now also nvidia so i will need i will say maybe to test them Will take a little bit of time to see if my, uh, I would say, if my setups need different uh, tweaking over here. Yeah, yeah, you, you can play around with the time frame uh, and also the automatic setting there, um, however okay. you like. I, I can sit with you later, uh, one on one, if you like, or uh, you know, if you want to yeah, do it. I'll in... try testing myself, Bruce. Thank you. In the meantime. Sure. So, traders. Let's recap a little bit over here what happened. So this is Pitten. Uh, crazy volatility these days. Uh, my point of view is uh, you have to be pretty quick when you trade this. For example, at the open, and I'm going to uh, filter a few things over here. So I'm going to put, for example, this at 700, maybe even 900. So 900 over here. Right. Looks better. So what I liked over here, the open, is that we pop into this liquidity right away, boom, wash. And then start to make lower highs, lower lows. Then it basically reversed with this move. And you can see that we went to clear this liquidity, soaked, VWAP dip, bounce back up, curling, curling again. And then over here, started to make lower highs, lower lows. Wash. Here's where we have 
the high liquidity coming in. So uh, high liquidity, high liquidity. And over here, we had a big buyer, right? This was canceling over here and moving up, canceling, moving up, canceling, moving up. So he tried to support over here and hold the price. And it really worked, it really worked. And uh, then over here, a big exhaustion move. They go all over here, right away, boom, wash it. And then over here, push into this high liquidity. So if you really see bookmap today on Python, work extremely good, work extremely good. This is DCFC. So the stock that we have been trading all morning. Three main levels to watch. First, main support level 1550. Clear out the liquidity. Sweep indicator coming over here, showing aggressive buyers. And then push into this again high liquidity area at 1575. And then again push into this high liquidity area. And then right away, fast over here, wash. Uh, I think this happened very quick. Let's see. No, actually, not that quick. Not that quick. 15 seconds, 20 seconds over here to move down. Uh, wash is basically when you have this, goes here, and then boom, dump. But beautiful scenario over here this morning on DCFC. Again, I don't really suggest you to trade this short. Um, I traded this only long. Uh, if you're going to trade short this, prepare to have huge losses, even if you are a good trader, because the volume is high. The volume is high, and you can have some, uh, some early entries. Let's say I want to short this level of resistance here. Boom, I get stopped out. Or I want to short over here this level of resistance. And uh, you can get stopped out again, right? So not really looking too short. Unless we fill the J lines, we start rejecting, and I have this. Like I was telling you basically before, traders. That's the only scenario over here. Instead, what we can have is basically this. And again, again, I push it up. So for now, price is holding this area. Any questions, traders? Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty quiet in there. Let's see. Amar, Amar S, Aim, uh, Barboza, Bimond, Taru, Cody, Flavio. Any question, traders? Gondola. See a lot of uh, of traders over here. Mugen. I mean, questions don't work very well for you. I mean, your clarity and and uh, uh, is just uh, really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Uh, let's see, Alec over here, Barbosa, Sam. We have also Sam over here. We have. Thank you, Jay. Maybe an update on BTC. All right, BTC. Very, very fast. So this is what I said this morning. Bruce, can you let me two seconds talk about BTC? Oh, yeah, of course, whatever you like. So BTC traders is uh, I invest in two ways. One, investment long term. Two, trading for short term. Invest in long term. I release a free video on YouTube. Watch it. Some Bitcoin explains everything that I'm looking for, and it's free. Uh, you can use also for uh, BTC bookmap is useful for me when I do day trading. You can connect it to Kraken and others. This is what I'm looking for in investment long term. This is what I'm looking for in investment long term. This is what I'm looking for in investment long term. Basically, you have the shift as I wrote over here. 
of the 72 together with the um, 19210, which is the JLens 1 shifting with the JLens 2. And then you have basically a curl like this over here. Right now, if you look at these patterns, traders, and I'm going to cancel this, look what happens. You see this level, right? So this is a, a J lines 2, so 192.10. We went exactly to this level, right? So the price bounce went to exactly this level in the daily and then rejected, and it found eventually support, and then a breakout, retested, and then it started to go all the way up. If you look at this level here, and now this level over here is basically doing the same scenario. So we are bouncing into this level and we had a possible rejection. So we are bouncing right now. And of course, now I still didn't confirm that we have a rejection, but this is a possible scenario. So I'm not really longing over here uh, for the long term. For the short term, we have some very good setups. And uh, today, I was looking for uh, these patterns with my bears all morning, all morning, all morning. So uh, the first scenario here we had for a long this level, you can see the dip 37 curl basically is what I showed you on the daily chart, right? Then over here we had Bruce would have liked over here with this uh, sweep indicator because over here they had a fast wash reclaim, fast stuff over here wash, and then eventually over here they broke over here and again fast push over here so i believe the sweep would have worked right away boom slammed down dip j lines and now if i'm looking for a possible confirmation i'm going to look for this dip what i'm looking over here on the five minutes to enter is basically a cross of the two j lines over here a cup and then a long or another chart pattern that it confirms my trade basically the same pattern that we've been talking about on uh, NVCT yesterday, PHUN, Pitten uh, long yesterday, or today DCFC is the same exact scenario that I want to look over here on uh, Bitcoin. Now, uh, an update on uh, um, on eight uh, on uh, Nvidia from eight over here. So Nvidia daily chart. So when I trade Nvidia, I look at ES and NQ as a main guide. Tech stocks move very good. Nvidia has one of the best uh, options around because they're pretty cheap. We have a very high liquidity area over here, which is a supply zone at 271. Price is just pushing into this second high liquidity area, which is the J lines. Now they're breaking out. Trend is up above the previous day range. Only look for me to trade longs on the J lines over here. Uh, what's your opinion on Facebook? Saw that Peter Thief sold a stake in Facebook as in there's a bearish signal. So let's look over here. Yes, but we always have to know how the market, we always have to consider how the market reacts. For example, what can be bad for me, maybe it can be good for you, all right? So it's in Latin, we say ado ut des. Now, uh, this is a pattern that I said this morning has two possible scenarios. One, you will have over here a, uh, push to the upside, a dip, and then a long. In this case, you want to see for the 225, so this side over here, dip, holding and pushing. And where I'm looking to short, only below this 220 area. If I check the one minute chart, you can see that we're pretty lateral for the morning. No really good setup for me to long. No, you see, we have no lower high, higher lows, higher highs. So let it, let it uh, just stay there. Um, you again, so please with my log on DCFC into the halt. Uh, I'll thank you for the hard work you have put in the mentoring journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mugen. Thank you, buddy, for being here and being honest. Thank you very much. So over here, Facebook traders, uh, not really looking to trade something like this. Even yesterday was pretty choppy. Uh, pushed into the 200 and then only started to trade in the afternoon. What do you think long SPY? So I don't trade personally SPY because I trade ES and NQ. Uh, SPY, uh, you can look for the options. This is our daily. If you break this main level of resistance, previous relative high, so a 459, then we can look for a possible big push to the next target over here, 472. Actually, it's this one I'm looking, buddy. Until I don't have that breakout over here and the confirmation, I'm not looking through this. In this case, uh, it will really start another bullish phase for the market.
you can see yes the same over here this is what i'm looking for okay so 4590 over here 46000 uh 4600 all right uh, any other questions mm, yeah no i think that's uh, i think that's everything joseph okay 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 uh bruce i think we covered the majority of the of the things today uh, i think we had a very good session we look for some very good tasty trades uh if traders you need help uh just reach out uh, amar again everybody over here i will answer every single question but write to my dm or write to bruce i will answer every single body of you so again very sick week for me uh very happy uh hope to see you making gains and most of all learning how to fish which is more important than making gains in the moment so listen to bruce whatever he says and uh become good traders thank you very much bruce thank you very much everybody thank you joseph bye 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 bye